Hi, I'm Christoph Liebig, a PhD Fellow in Entrepreneurship at Copenhagen Business School. In this video, I will introduce my newest journal article called Social Imaginaries of Entrepreneurship Education, Germany and the United States, 1800 until 2020, co-authored with Dan Wadwani and published in Academy of Management, Learning and Education. Conventional historical narratives of entrepreneurship education focus on its rise in U.S. business school beginning in the 1970s and phases of massive growth and global expansions from the 1980s until today. This historical narrative is more than a colorful backdrop for entrepreneurship educators and a nice story to tell in the introduction of entrepreneurship education journal articles. The historical narrative shapes the self-identity of entrepreneurship as a field of research and serves as a yardstick against which the progress of entrepreneurship education is evaluated. In contrast to histories of management education, histories of entrepreneurship education are limited to the recent past and focused on university-based business schools. Against this backdrop, Dan Wadwani and I developed a deeper historical narrative of entrepreneurship education, comparing its development in the United States and Germany since the early 19th century. To narrate this deeper history of entrepreneurship education, we examined a wide variety of historical sources. Using a comparative history design, we show that changing social imaginaries which are wildly held views and beliefs shared by a community of people, of entrepreneurship education in Germany and the United States were based on the public image of entrepreneurs and their envisioned contribution to the common good. We explore how these social imaginaries shape the moral and political legitimacy of entrepreneurship and the aims, practices and organizational forms of entrepreneurship education. Our paper contributes to the scholarship on entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship education in three ways. First, we can show that entrepreneurship education does not evolve in a linear fashion, but rather experiences periods of growth and decline when new social imaginaries arise that challenge existing understandings of the status quo. Based on these patterns, we posit that entrepreneurship education had its, its own internal dynamic of change in which each wave of educational reform creates condition for its own potential demise. This means that the rapid expansion of entrepreneurship education in recent years can be seen as much as a cause for concern as a reason to celebrate. Hence, the future of entrepreneurship education lies in the field's ability to continuously articulate morally compelling social imaginaries at a larger societal scale. Second, we show that what today is conceived as entrepreneurial knowledge is limited. Contemporary entrepreneurship education typically focus on either analytically functional or pragmatic experiential forms of knowledge. Our history shows a third form of knowledge, namely moral reasoning, largely absent in contemporary entrepreneurship education. We argue that moral reasoning and humanistic thinking, for instance developed by studying history and philosophy, are important for entrepreneurs because such knowledge is essential for deciding upon the means and ends of any entrepreneurial activity. Finally, our historical narrative also sheds light on the complicated relationship between entrepreneurship education and the modern university. Today, these tensions are often ascribed to entrepreneurship status as a new field and hence to uncertainty over if and how it fits within the classification system of disciplines and professions. We show that the disciplinary classification that defines contemporary universities serve to legitimize its identity as a place of highly specialized knowledge and learning at the cost of excluding a broad-minded vision of entrepreneurship education that integrated scientific, embodied and moral inquiry. From this historical perspective, entrepreneurship education's ongoing identity as an undisciplined discipline, as we call it, can be seen not as a problem to be overcome, but as an unfulfilled opportunity for freeing universities of some of their old conventions and making the university its own entrepreneurial project.